gorgeous, gorgeous girls rescue lizards. It's Em and welcome back to my channel. If you're brand new to my channel, welcome. My name's Em. I'm a former zookeeper and I'm a digital animal educator. Today I'm going to be sharing with you the reasons why I personally believe you should adopt adult bearded dragons. If you haven't already, remember to hit that subscribe button down below, become part of the creature crew and also hit that notification bell down in the corner there so you don't miss a single upload. But before we jump into today's video and I introduce you to Norbert, I would love to give a huge shout out and thank you to today's sponsor, Ren. By answering a few simple questions on the Ren.co website, you can find out more about your carbon footprint and make a donation in order to offset your carbon footprint towards a project which really matters and helps to protect our environment. Now you might not know this, but the reason why I'm so late in coming back to YouTube in 2022 is because the day before New Year's, we had a horrible issue here in Colorado. We had the most devastating wildfires that just wreaked havoc on our, our local community. This was just a few miles from my house. We were on pre-evacuation here. I had all my animals packed up and ready to go. It was absolutely devastating and recently I've been trying to do what I can to help with relief efforts to try and get people and their pets reunited and back on their feet. So one of the REN projects which is really speaking to me right now is the biochar in California. California project. And I'm going to read it off their website because they've worded it beautifully. This project helps to prevent wildfires in California's old growth forests by removing dead and flammable trees, then using a cutting edge process to turn the tree biomass into biochar, keeping carbon out of the air for thousands of years. So naturally, this project speaks volumes to me. What about you, Norbert? Were you, were you all packed up and ready to evacuate? Yeah, he did great. So if you would like to find out more about Ren, please do go down into my description box where there is a clickable link for you where you can go and check out Ren and sign up. Once you do sign up to Ren and you start making your monthly contributions towards a project of your choice, you will continue to get email updates about all the different things that your money is helping to fund. For example, photos of the trees that are being planted so you can really see your donation going to really good causes. Getting started it is super simple. All you have to do is click the link down in my description box and go and check out Ren for yourself. And the very first hundred of you to use that link will have an additional 10 trees planted in your name. Thank you so much to Ren for sponsoring today's video. And now let's meet Norbert. So in case you just happened to miss Norbert, this is Norbert, my new bearded dragon. Now, disclaimer, he was an impulse adoption. I'm not going to lie about it. It is what it is. And I always try to say on my channel that you shouldn't impulse adopt or impulse purchase. Sometimes things happen. I went to Aurora here in Colorado and it was to a pet store called Nature Boxes Pet Emporium, I think. And I was actually in there picking up four baby Chinese water dragons who you will get to meet in a video very soon. Um, but while I was in there, of course, everybody is super busy as usual in a reptile store. So I'm just sort of, you know, looking around thinking, oh, if I had space for that and oh, I would never keep that. So I'm in this great reptile store and I am like a kid in a candy store and as my new Chinese water dragons are being caught and boxed up for me along with all of their supplies because they're who I went in to get. I've been considering them for a while um, in my sort of private reptile collection pivot towards the Asian species and underbred and underrepresented species. Um, I, I caught my eye, my eye was caught by, by Norbert, 
Norbert who caught my eye and the reason why Norbert caught my eye was because he had his big black beard flared out and his mouth open, he was gaping at me and I was like, excuse me, how can you just not like me upon not even knowing me, just upon seeing me? Is, is my appearance that distressing to you? And like everybody else was walking past and he was totally chill and it was literally every time I walked past that he had his mouth open and this woman was so sweet and um, I don't know if she knew much about reptiles. She seemed like she might have just sort of floated in um, because that's where the wind took her that day and she's like wow this lizard and you have like this real connection. I can really feel the energy. And I was like, oh, there's, there's, there's energy, all right? Mostly because he hates me. <laughs> he hates my face. Um, and, and so she just, you know, was like, okay, you're weird and left um, and, and left me with Norbert. And I remember just thinking to myself, I can see he's up for adoption. He's not um, a an animal that's for sale at the same uh, price as all the rest of the bearded dragons. Not that price is an issue to me when it comes to committing to an animal, because it should never really be about the price. It's whether you should have the animal because you want to, you're knowledgeable, you have the space, the time, the energy, the expense as well, and the finances to move forward with the purchase uh, and the ongoing expenses like veterinary treatment. Um, but I also thought to myself, you know, I do miss having a bearded dragon. For those of you who've been with me for a while, you might remember Bad Idea. Now, Bad Idea was never my bearded dragon. And of course, when everything happened in my relationship, just, you know, that, um, and I left, he was not mine to bring with me. And I've really missed having a bearded dragon. So I just looked at Norbert, who was looking at me like, and there were a ton of beautiful bearded dragons there. There were hypos and silk backs and all sorts of different colors that I don't even know. There was one tangerine that was really gorgeous, a big, beautiful female. But I just thought to myself, I'm gonna pick you because you don't want me to pick you and, and we're gonna have fun taming you down and, and I enjoy a challenge. This is something that I've always spoken about with my old roomie, Kate. She's always said like, why do you pick the animals that don't like you? And honestly, I've always just been like, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I should talk to my coach about it. Maybe it's some kind of self-punishment thing. I don't know. <laughs> We accept the love we think we deserve. <laughs> so I spoke to the store manager and I was like, listen, this one over here, this one with the attitude, what can you tell me about this bearded dragon? And he was kind enough to let me know that Norbert was a relinquishment. So if you don't know this, a lot of pet stores will allow people who can no longer look after their animals, which is perfectly fine and I fully support this, um, to drop their animals off and sometimes there's a fee, sometimes it's for free, and those animals after a quarantine period go up for adoption rather than for sale. So for Norbert, I actually was told he was a whole $30. Oh yes, he was. You, you were, you, you're like, you're like discount. Yeah, you're, you're like a little discount bearded dragon. Yeah, not so little though. He's, he's, a, he's a bit chonk. <laughs> and in my mind, I've already figured out I have a beautiful 4x2x4 four by two by four enclosure at home from Zen Habitats. And I can see in my mind the way his enclosure is going to come together. I have a nice quarantine space. So I did bring him home. And I think that was in, I want to say November. Was it in November? I'm, I'm like waiting for you to see if you're going to reply. He's looking at my tongue rolling around in my mouth, wondering if he can nip at it. Um, so I brought Norbert home and I settled all of my little Chinese water dragons in their quarantine enclosures. And I just thought, let me see what this bearded dragon is really like. Now that he's not in a glass enclosure with his reflection all over the place. 
and I was so pleasantly surprised. I brought him upstairs. Naturally, it was quite cold on the way home and I kept him as warm as possible and he had heat packs, but I thought, let's just warm him up and see how feisty he really is. And so I put on, just as like to be funny, the movie How to Tame Your Dragon. Is it How to Tame Your Dragon or How to Train Your Dragon? I always have difficulty with that one, Norbert. And he just came up on my chest and I thought, he is going to bite my lip. I've had it happen before. I'm gonna get bitten. There's no two ways to avoid this. Like, there's, there's no avoiding it. I am going to get bitten. But he surprised me and he just nestled into my hair and snuggled and I, I couldn't believe it and I thought to myself this bearded dragon who you know obviously was a relinquishment must be really missing cuddles because if you don't know this bearded dragons they can be a very cuddly lizard not all of them it really does vary they all have their own individual personalities and yes they do have personalities i'm not anthropomorphizing them they do have personalities and they are singular and individual to each bearded dragon so he started cuddling with me and we watched the entire movie and he didn't budge he just wanted to nestle and sleep and every now and then he'd just like look up at me and it was adorable. I got so lucky because he is a really cuddly lizard. I don't know if you can tell but he's he's a good boy and he loves his head scratches. Oh my goodness. And it just made me think about how rewarding the whole experience has been because I was expecting a challenge and whilst I would welcome a challenge I ended up with a lizard who I didn't know I really needed. So yeah, he, he didn't he didn't serve the purpose of being a challenge where I could show you how to tame down a lizard. He just decided he was gonna tame himself down. And what I can say is whoever had Norbert beforehand put in a lot of work to this bearded dragon and obviously loved him very much. And it just goes to show you that not every animal that gets dropped off at a rescue center is neglected or um, their owners are not being responsible. The responsible thing to do if you can't look after an animal is to drop them off somewhere where they can be well looked after and find a new home. And I'm really glad that we found each other, Norbert. Oh, he's leaving now. Thanks, I don't feel... I don't feel unwanted at all. Getting a bit restless, so I've decided to put him here. Not this, this is a dumpling steamer, which is gonna go on the, the wall. It's a long story, um, but that right here. This is Norbert. <laughs> so, reasons why I personally believe you should opt to adopt an adult bearded dragon over a juvenile or a baby bearded dragon, let's get started. Of course, before you opt to bring any animal home, whether it's a purchase, a rescue from an adoption center or from a, a store or a pet shop, then make sure you do your research. Research, research, research is super important. And one of the main things you need to think about with Bitty Dragon is their lifespan. They are projected to live anywhere between 10 and 15 years, but that can go either way. So be prepared for a shorter commitment or a longer commitment. So something to really think about when you're considering bringing home a new bearded dragon is where you're going to source your bearded dragon from. Obviously, if you've read the title of this video and the description box, you'll notice that I am very much in favor of rescuing and adopting reptiles, but you can actually do that in a whole bunch of places. You can actually rescue and adopt in stores because certain reptile stores will have sections for adoptions which are separate from their livestock which are for sale, like a, a regular sale. Um, or you can find a dedicated reptile rescue. They are 
few and far between, but they do exist. Here in Colorado, we have the Denver Reptile Humane Society. Um, so there is that where you can always go to, and they always have adult bearded dragons. So um, it's really well worth looking around if you are planning on adopting an adult bearded dragon, like I really do hope you are. But I can hear your brain ticking. Um, why an adult? Why can't I rescue a baby? Well, if you really do want to have a baby bearded dragon because you really want to watch them grow, then fair enough, go and do that. You know what is right for your circumstances. But for me, I'm here to tell you about the benefits of adopting an adult bearded dragon. And some of these benefits are financial. Now you might think that an adult established bearded dragon is going to cost a ton more than a baby bearded dragon, but that's not always the case. Norbert here was 30 US dollars, which is something around, I want to say 25 pounds roughly. Now, something that a lot of people don't think about when they're going to bring home a baby bearded dragon is not just the purchase price, which can be expensive depending on the morph and the place where you source your baby bearded dragon, but also on how much they're going to eat. Baby bearded dragons are voracious hunters and live foods can get really, really expensive. So if you want to save a little bit of dollar, then going for an established adult bearded dragon is going to help you because an adult bearded dragon's diet is very different from a juvenile's. An adult is predominantly mixed leafy greens with a couple of insects thrown in every few days. But in order to stop them from becoming obese or overweight, we keep Bit more on the salad side, whereas baby bearded dragons don't want anything to do with salad. They want to eat all the bugs they can, and this gets really, really expensive. And bearded dragons are not the fastest growers, so sometimes it can kind of feel like you're just throwing money down a dragon's mouth which is essentially why a lot of people who get into breeding bearded dragons very swiftly get out of that hobby because you are always gonna lose money when you are breeding a ton of bearded dragons. So if you are fiscally inclined and you want to watch your pennies, then going for an adult actually saves you money in multiple ways. And other ways which it can help you to save money is in the enclosure. So you might be thinking, hang on a second, hang on a second. Now you might be thinking, um, you're clearly drinking from a Kool-Aid because a baby bearded dragon is only going to need an enclosure that's going to cost me this much, whereas an adult is going to need a much bigger enclosure. And yes, it is true. But what you're forgetting is babies will grow. And as they grow, you will continue to have to upgrade their enclosure. So eventually you are going to have to purchase that big enclosure. And rather than spending all that money on all the food and all of the different enclosures, you could just opt to buy the big enclosure and save yourself some money if you can. Not everybody's in that position, I appreciate that, so it really is up to you, but I'm here to try and help you make decisions if you do have options. Another way in which going for an adult bearded dragon can help you to save money is actually on vet's bills, because you wouldn't believe how many baby bearded dragons have a ton of parasites or issues, because they're not always sourced from the cleanest of locations. And and more often than not, a lot of baby bearded dragons will actually die. Not all of them that end up in homes, a lot of the really sick ones don't ever make it to the store shelves because um, store workers and uh, people who are handling the animals can kind of often tell which ones are not going to make it, they don't go out for sale. But that's not always the case, and sometimes you just can't tell. Remember that reptiles are incredibly stoic and they don't show when they're sick a lot of the time. So many people go into a Petco or a PetSmart and they'll purchase their brand new baby bearded dragon, bring it home, and then a couple of days or weeks or months later, it's dead. And they've done everything right. They haven't done anything wrong. It's just there's either a genetic deformity, some kind of parasite they didn't pick up on, or just something has, you know, some of them just fail to flourish. And that happens. Not every baby bearded dragon will make it, which is why they have such large clutches. 
Mother Nature's cruel and she'll weed out those that are not going to make it. So if you are looking to save yourself some money in vets bills, if you're looking to save yourself some heartache, then by going for an established adult bearded dragon, you know that they're already hardened off. You, you know that they are a healthy specimen and by taking them to the vet just that one time when you bring them home, having them run a fecal, check for parasites, that is going to save you money in the long run as well. Another positive thing about adopting an adult bearded dragon is they tend to be, not in every case, but they tend to be a lot more calm and chilled out. Now, any juvenile reptile tends to be a bit skittish because the world is big and everything might want to try and eat them. It's scary. So um, a lot of young reptiles don't, no, 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 we, we don't eat Emma's hair. That is, that is off limits. We do not touch the hair. If you're particularly looking forward to handling your bearded dragon, dragging? <laughs> If you're particularly looking forward to hanging out with and handling your bearded dragon, an adult, you can't you can't go wrong with. They tend to be a lot more docile and a lot more chilled out because juvenile reptiles are often a little bit more skittish or a lot more skittish than their adult counterparts because the world is big and scary and hands look like predators and a lot of bearded dragons will be a lot more flighty as juveniles but will calm down really well with age and with handling. Now with Norbert but as you heard earlier, I was more than happy to keep him and tame him down if he was going to be a, a terror, which I'm super glad I didn't have to because he turned out to be such a wonderful companion. Um, and, and that's such a wonderful thing is that oftentimes you can tell what you are getting. Norbert did surprise me in a really good way, but when you go to a reptile store or to a reptile rescue, they can often tell you a bit more about the handleability of the animal. Whereas with all juveniles, it's like, well, they'll handle, if you handle them, they'll tame down with, with age. Um, that's the general consensus with most reptiles that are considered handleable. Um, but with an adult, they'll be able to tell you with more certainty, yes, they're generally very good and very laid back, or you might want to try a different option. If you're super set on a specific color, then again, going for an adult bearded dragon, you know exactly the color that you are going to get. Whereas if you go into a reptile store um, or into a, a really big pet store, like a chain pet store, they won't be able to necessarily tell you exactly the morph you're getting. And a, a young bearded dragon that's a tangerine that looks really vibrant might dull down with age, or they might really become more intense with color with age. So if you really don't want to take any chances on the eventual color of your bearded dragon, you know what you're getting with an adult. Also, by getting an adult bearded dragon, you're going to 100% know the sex of that bearded dragon. The males will have these large beards and jowls. They are going to have pores, which are very visible, um, whereas the females won't have those. So it'll be much easier for you to tell if you have a male or a female, if you have a preference. For me, my preference is definitely males because I don't want to have to deal with a female getting egg bound. So for me, male are always my preference when it comes to many reptiles as well as dogs and ferrets. Most animals I prefer having males uh, so knowing that Norbert was a big healthy chunky male that suited me just fine. And finally we come to the last reason why I personally believe that adopting an adult bearded dragon is so much more rewarding than buying a baby is because there are so many in reptile rescues and in stores looking for homes and it can really help to save a life as well. So if you are really not sure if you have a preference between a baby or an adult, do consider an adult because let's be honest, everybody loves cute babies. Everybody has the thought in their mind about documenting their baby grow from baby to adult, but not everybody 
really wants to go on that journey or is really thinking about documenting and if you're not then an adult bearded dragon could be a great way for you to bring an animal into your life that you already know plenty about and that you can really commit to just enjoying your time with and nothing is going to be as cuddly as an adult bearded dragon. I mean, look at this boy, look at this gorgeous boy. He is a gorgeous, gorgeous boy. Gorgeous, gorgeous boys have beards. I don't know why I just stuck my chin out like I had one. Beard. But what do you think? I would love to hear your thoughts. Do you have a preference yourself? Do you prefer having a baby over an adult? And if so, then why? Share those in a comment down below and be nice to each other because we're talking about bringing animals home. It should be a joyous thing. And as long as everyone's doing it respectfully and is doing it with uh, lots of knowledge and preparation, then there's no need to really, um, argue about anything, but I can feel Norbert getting a little bit restless now. I'm gonna go and let him have his afternoon greens and get some sleep. So thank you all so, so much for watching, and please do remember to go and check out Ren.co as well. Thank you, Ren, for sponsoring today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. I will see you in another video soon. Bye!